When our children were five and two years old, my husband was diagnosed with oral cancer. Over the next several months, he had chemos and radiation, a feeding tube, you name it. It was really intense. The technology they used was so state of the art that at one point the doctors fitted him with a special mask to make sure that not a single non-cancerous part of his face and neck was exposed to radiation. As a result, my husband has been cancer free for eight years. So that, that's how far our science and knowledge have brought us in the fight against some diseases. So it's frustrating in my work that we're still struggling to solve the global problem of malnutrition in populations that limits the healthy growth and development of children. We know that malnutrition is an underlying cause of nearly half of child deaths. We also know that severe forms of malnutrition are linked to physical and cognitive underdevelopment, sometimes reflected in stunting when kids don't grow as tall as they should. In some poor countries, as many as two in every five children suffer from stunting. We've made an incredible amount of progress, and we've learned a lot about fighting stunting. We just don't know much about how to fix stunting on a large scale. It's one of the most frustrating challenges in global health. One reason it's so frustrating is that malnutrition and stunting are umbrella terms that cover a huge range of deficiencies and developmental difficulties that affect a lot of complicated, complicated interacting systems. But another reason stunting is such a problem is that we have really bad data about how big kids actually are. So here's one way we currently get our data. In household surveys, teams take measurements using a bulky board called a stadiometer, a scale, measuring tapes. You need at least two people to hold the child in the right position. And one of them takes the measurements. Then they do it all over again to make sure the numbers match. Both people have to be trained to the standards and they have to keep those standards consistent as they travel all around a region or country until the end of the data collection campaign. Now, think about any one-year-old baby you know. She's probably really cute and good at crawling around and spitting out whatever she's being fed and squirming and crying. What is she not good at? Sitting or lying still on demand. Letting strangers grab her, not chewing on equipment she's curious about. So think about how hard it would be for two people she's never seen in her life to take accurate measurements of her length, her weight, her arm circumference, her head circumference, twice in one sitting. So now multiply her by a few thousand, and then try to measure those few thousand babies with equipment that needs completely flat surfaces and 90 degree angles to work in a country where a lot of people live in homes without any of those things. Add the fact that data collection can last for months. That's a lot of squirming, crying baby tantrums for survey teams to measure without letting their standards slip. Now, some of you may be thinking, okay, so the measurements are a little off a few centimeters, what's the big deal? Well, I'll give you an example. Not long ago, an anthropometry assessment was done in two districts that found almost 30% acute malnutrition. These set off emergency alarms and calls for funds to intervene. My colleague was sent there and then quickly led two follow-up anthropometry surveys and found half that amount of malnutrition. All this money and resources were spent on therapeutic food and equipment and staff in response to a crisis that didn't exist, which also means that maybe another region desperately needed millions of dollars worth of therapeutic food, equipment, and staff, but because their measurements were just as inaccurate in the other direction, Nobody had any idea that a lot of people there were acutely malnourished and in crisis. 
So how do we solve this problem? We start by begin bringing the equipment we use to measure children's surveys and surveillance systems into the modern era. We can kill cancer by shooting lasers at it because we're relying on cutting edge technology like MRIs and lasers. But for surveillance, we use equipment based on technology that was available to the ancient Romans. Luckily, things might be changing soon. Our team is evaluating one type of technology that uses inexpensive, easily portable equipment that captures 3D body images to calculate body measurements. We've had these kinds of technologies to do this for a while, but only with equipment too expensive and bulky to really be used to address malnutrition on a large scale. This and other emerging technologies like it could revolutionize the way we collect body measurements. For the 3D body image technology, you don't need a stadiometer or a scale or a measuring tape, and all you need is a tablet or a phone and a special camera. You have a kid stand or lie in certain positions. Her mom or dad can hold her hands if you want, and you take a few scans from the front and a few from the back, and you're done. The scans are uploaded and later calculated into height and other body measurements that in controlled studies have proven as accurate as those taken by expert manual anthropometrists. The idea is that the thousandth scan the equipment does will be exactly as accurate as the first scan. What's more, as these types of technological advances continue, maybe someday, Anybody could do the scans. So a child's mother, a grandmother, anybody in this room, as long as you were able to touch a screen a few times. I'd like to introduce my wonderful colleague, Dr. Kareem Bugma, to give us a look at this system. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you to my wonderful colleague, Maria. So to uh, the CDC and the CDC foundations are helping to evaluate this technology. To start the station, we enter first the identification of the child. It can be the name or the ID coded. It can be the, uh, the, the sex, the date of birth, and other information. And we also make sure that the environment is suited for the, for the measurement. We make sure that we have a flat surface, and we make sure that we avoid direct natural light. Uh, shade or dim light should be enough. And we also make sure that the, the child and the, the floor are well uh, captured on the screen of the of the, of, the, of the tablet. So to make it really real, I would like to have a, to, to have a volunteer. Can I have a volunteer? Yeah, oh, I have one, I have one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hola. Ladies and gentlemen, my daughter, Nina Sofia. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Hola, Nina, can you make your hand like this? Okay, like me last time, okay? Okay. Yeah, great. Yeah. You're doing great, Nina. That's wonderful. Okay, one more time. We take a few scans from the front. That's great. So, Nina, can you look at now mom and dad? Can you turn and look mom and dad? Look and turn, yeah, and you do the same. Wonderful. You're great. You're doing wonderful. That's really amazing. Another one. Another one, so you have the screen, the screen on the scan. Okay, that's great. So, and whenever, so we're done with the scan, and whenever the, the tablet is connected to internet, the scans are automatically uploaded to the system, to the cloud, and now you can see what we get on the system on the computer, and these images will be integrated front and back, and using an algorithm, we're going to extract the measurement of the child, a height, uh, but a uh, head circumference and her arm circumference. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, uh, Nina. So thank you very much, Nina. That's wonderful. Okay, so Elena, I'm giving it back to you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Nina. Great job. <laughs> right now, this technology is being tested in Guatemala, which has the highest rate of stunting in Latin America. We're helping evaluate the 3D imaging technology's accuracy and acceptability in real-world household survey settings. The results for this evaluation are not in yet. But with continued innovations, we could soon have more tools capable of giving practitioners and policymakers much more accurate data much more quickly in the fight against malnutrition. 
both over the long term and in short term emergencies like droughts or famines. But improvements in body measurements won't just help on a population level. They could also help doctors make sure they're giving individual kids the right treatments and suggesting the right diets. For adults, these technological innovations could be powerful tools against obesity in low and middle income countries. The problem of malnutrition is far too big to be solved with just one technology. But innovations like 3D body imaging have the potential to be powerful tools that could help a lot of kids be a lot healthier a lot sooner.